A little while ago, a team of enthusiasts discovered and excavated a Second World War armoured vehicle from this land in the Fens. It went viral on the internet, and so obviously I had to come and check it out and meet the team behind it, who are here. Hey guys, how's it going? Hi. Hi. How on earth did you first have an inkling that there might be World War II vehicles beneath where we're standing now? Well, Dan, listen to uh, my grandparents' stories from childhood memories. So what, there were stories when you were, if you're local around here, there were always stories, were there? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. There was those believers and there was those that obviously disbelieved that it was real. The stories tell of the dramatic floods of 1947. In a desperate attempt to stem the flow, the authorities brought in World War II amphibious vehicles, LVT Buffaloes. These were lined up and sandbagged as a kind of emergency dam. Things didn't go to plan. What everyone told the public is that these vehicles are tanks, and tanks are heavy. These, these vehicles weren't tanks, they were amphibious. They were due to float and five floated out. And two of them remain within the fishing pit here. You're kidding. Six foot down in the fishing what? pit, yeah. And one of them was here under this hole and it was 30 feet down at the front and 28 feet down at the back. And you guys found it? And we found it. But finding the vehicle in the wide open fields of Lincolnshire was no easy matter. You have these childhood memories, rumours. How do you put meat on the bones and actually work out where to dig a big hole like this? Well, I spent three years doing research of libraries and listening to people's memories, writing everything down. And then we proceeded from there to get G GPS involved, RF bomb disposal team involved, and scanned the ground and we located these blobs and one of the massive blobs was here, just here, and there's another one a little bit further back. The team were hoping they'd found one of the buffaloes, but now they had to get it out. Now I look at it, there is, this is a big area of disturbed earth. I mean, how much earth did you move, do you think? Well, Nick will be able to tell you that. Uh, it was around four and a half thousand tonnes <laughs> by very, but very rough calculations. We obviously didn't measure it, but, um, but yeah, about four and a half thousand, we think. That is a lot of earth. First, those thousands of tonnes of soil had to be shifted. As they reached 30 foot down, it became clear they were digging in the right place. Several more days of digging, and it was time to pull the vehicle out of the pit. Two cranes and a lot of care. But finally, after more than seven decades underground, the buffalo was free. Dan, this was the result of years of research and hard work for you. What was it like that moment she's just starting to come out of the earth? Well, when it started to come out, we got one off the, above the army, is what I thought. Because in 1947, the army had tried to recover it and failed. And we've got it and we've won it. So there you are. It was a top mark for us anyway. But yeah, over the moon. Brilliant. So exciting. Yeah, yeah. And it still is. Every day you're finding something different on it. The buffalo was carefully transported to a nearby crane works, where I can finally get to see it for myself. Yes, and here sir. it is now. I cannot believe it. <laughs> Impressive bit of kit, isn't it? It is. This is all cleaned up. I've only seen the pictures online of it covered in clay, but this is in amazing condition. It's taken four weeks now to get it all to this sort of state, and there's still muck coming off it. And you must have gone round it with a toothbrush to you know, clear out all the clay. Yeah, a lot of hammers and chisels, yeah. you know. You greased it up. That's, that's no, your grease, isn't no, it? No, no, that's grease from 1947 or 1944 since it was made. Extraordinary. What job were these doing during the Second World War? 
Uh, there are troop carriers and machinery carriers, so you would get a Willys Jeep within the back. They're used in the Pacific War, were they? Yes. quite a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for island hopping, yeah. And what about not on D-Day? There's only a, a limited a few on D-Day, and, and I've only seen one or two. And so mainly used a bit later in the war for river crossings like the Rhine and yes. things like that, right? Yes, yeah. That's mainly what the British bought them for, was for the Rhine crossing. Do we think this one was at the Rhine crossing? Yes. Wow. We, have, we found rations under the floorboards that, state that they were used during in, battle. In Plus, on the armour plate on the other side, we've got bullet holes. So it's been in combat? Yeah. Wow. And amazingly, many of the mechanisms still work smoothly. Right, are you clear? Yep, clear. Crikey. And have you replaced these cables here? No, they're original. What? Yep. That is brand new. Yeah, stainless steel. You're kidding. Right. That is amazing. The reason this has lasted so long is because there's a lot of brass items on it. So brass hinges, so they don't corrode in the rust. These are all brass. Those are still in working condition, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. It's even possible to get inside. How did you excavate all the clay out of here? By hand. By hand? Whoa. OK, coming through. Mind your head. Unbelievable. Some of the fixtures and fittings look like they're brand new. If you have a look behind your back, you'll see the uh, mark for water buffalo. Oh, yeah. The driver here. Yep. What, who are, Na navigator and radio man there. Okay. And yeah, what was the crew? So there would have been someone operating the... Three, three man crew. Okay. As you can see, it's in fantastic condition for its age. It's an astonishing condition. Look at this baker light here. And the dials are still in the, the dashboard. Crazy. What a piece of history. And what's even more remarkable, this isn't the only one. So you're telling me there's not just one more, there's loads more down there. Yeah, at least another five down there. Five? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. You can see quite a few humps and bumps here, can't you? Yes. Yeah, we've, we've measured uh, the inside of these humps and bumps, and these are the same measurement as an inside of a buffalo. Really? So, yeah. So just, just, just where the vegetation's a bit different, you think? Yes, yeah. Shall we go down and have a look? Yeah, go on, then. So with all this, where the nettles are and long grasses, We've got at least five buffaloes within this curvature of the bank. I mean, I'm obviously very excited, but you guys will always have to drive the plant in here. Are you getting itchy, itchy crane fingers? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to find something again, wouldn't it? Yeah. You reckon it's doable? We've done it before. Yeah, we can do it again. It all tells a story, doesn't it? Each buffalo was manned by different crews in the Rhine. Well, if it's all right with you guys, I'll tag along. Right, home. Sorry, Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> you can be certain that at History Hit, we'll be following every step of this exciting project. These remarkable vehicles saw service in the Second World War and ended their days protecting homes from the floods. I'd love to see more excavated so that neither they nor the histories of the people that served in them remain buried.
Welcome to the History Hit YouTube channel, which we are relaunching. We've got all the best exclusive content going straight onto this History Hit YouTube channel. And you can find out, for example, why on earth I'm standing at the top of this mast. You should probably subscribe. 